Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog, and today I'm going to show you how to knit a flower toe like the one I'm using here in my sundog socks. I like this toe shaping method because it's both pretty and functional. Flower toes can be used in socks that are knit from the top down. The toe is knit in two parts, and since the decreases are spaced evenly around the entire toe, instead of just at the sides of the sock, you get this more rounded anatomical shaping than a traditional wedge. I've spread the toe of my other sock over a tennis ball so you can see a little bit better how it's shaped. In the first part of the shaping, decreases are made every fourth round to create four of these pointed flower petals. After the flower petals are complete, Decreases are made every round to create this central swirl at the tip of the toe until only eight stitches remain. Then the sock is finished off by breaking the yarn and pulling it through those final eight stitches. Let's get started. If you're following a pattern that tells you when you need to begin your flower toe shaping, you can probably skip ahead to the next section of the video. Just be aware that flower toes are not necessarily the same length as other shaping methods. Compared to other toe shaping methods, there's not a simple formula for calculating this exact length in rounds for a flower toe, but I have a good way to closely estimate the toe length. You are going to need to know your round gauge of your knitting. First, we're going to estimate how many rounds the flower toe shaping will be. If your sock is between 36 and 68 stitches around, the number of toe rounds is going to be approximately equal to the number of circumference stitches divided by 2.6. For socks that are 72 to 88 stitches around, the number of toe rounds is going to be approximately equal to the number of circumference stitches divided by 2.5. The sock I'm knitting is 66, 60 stitches all the way around. So the number of toe rounds is going to be approximately equal to 60 divided by 2.6 which is 23.08 rounds. Again, this is just an estimate. Obviously, I can't knit 23.08 rounds. Next, we need to calculate the length that our toe is going to be so we know when to start. The toe length is going to be that estimated number of toe rounds that we just calculated divided by your gauge. So for my sock, my toe length is going to be 23.08 rounds that I just calculated divided by, by my gauge, which is 44 rounds per four inches. And when I divide that all out, I know that my toe is going to be about 2.1 inches long. So I know where to start the toe of my sock. Now let's start knitting. It can be very helpful to use stitch markers when you're shaping a flower toe. You want to divide the sock evenly into four sections by placing markers at the center of the instep stitches, the center of the sole stitches, and at each side of the sock. Since my sock is divided onto two needles with the instep on one side and the sole on the other, I'm going to use these needle changes as a sort of mental marker. Through this part of the shaping, I'll work a decrease round followed by three rounds with no decreases. The first decrease round is going to create the tip of each of the flower petals. So to do the first decrease round, all you need to do is purl two together and then knit to the marker. So I'll start with my 
purl two together and then knit across to the marker. And then for the remainder of the round, I'll do that three more times for a total of four times so that I have my four flower tips. So again, I'll purl two together and then knit to the marker, purl two together, knit to the next marker, purl two together, and knit to the next marker. After the first decrease round was complete, I knit three rounds without any decreases. For the next decrease round, I'm going to knit one, purl two together, knit across to two stitches before the marker, and then purl two together, and I'm going to do that a total of four times. So I will knit one, purl two stitches together, knit across to two stitches before the marker, and then I will purl those last two stitches before the marker together. And then I'll repeat that process three more times, one, two, three, until I get to the end of the round, and then I'll knit three rounds without any decreases. My toe is starting to take shape. After the last decrease round, I knit three rounds without any decreases. For the remaining decrease rounds, you wanna keep moving this first purl two together, one more stitch in away from the marker. The second purl two together is always going to happen in these last two stitches before the next marker. So for this decrease round, instead of doing a knit one, I'm going to knit two, then purl two together, knit to two stitches before the marker, and then purl two together a total of four times, and then work three rounds with no decreases. For the next decrease round, instead of doing a knit two, I would knit three and then purl two together, knit to two stitches before the next marker, purl two together, and again, I would do that a total of one, two, three, four times, and then work three rounds with no decreases. You continue in that manner until you have either zero, one, or two stitches in between the first purl two together and the second purl two together. Then, after working your three rounds with no decreases, you'll move on to the second part of the toe shaping. I finished the first part of my flower toe shaping, and it's a little bit easier now to see what's happening with those purl two together decreases in each of the four sections. So, this first decrease keeps moving one stitch to the left every time there's a decrease round. So you can see how they're kind of stair-stepped here to the left. The second purl two together decrease always happens in the same spot, so you can see how the decreases are stacked up on each other. And you keep decreasing until those two decreases meet up, or you may have either one or two stitches in between those two purl two togethers, depending on how many stitches you started with. The second part of the flower toe is super easy and requires almost no counting at all. You're going to start with a left slanting decrease. I am using a slip knit pass, but if you prefer, you could use a slip slip knit. Just make sure to use the same decrease throughout the rest of the toe shaping and then knit to the marker. Now you just keep doing that all the way around for every round. So you start with your slip knit pass or slip slip knit and then knit to the marker. 
and you're going to continue decreasing like that in every round until you only have eight stitches remaining for your sock toe. I have eight stitches left, four on each side. So now I'm ready to finish things off. I'm going to start by removing my stitch markers because I don't need them anymore. And then I cut my yarn so that it has about a 12 inch long tail, maybe a little bit longer, just enough to work with. And I thread the tail onto a yarn needle. And now I'm gonna pull the tail through the remaining eight stitches to finish them off. So I'll just go through the first four stitches here. It can be a little bit tight to get through, but that's okay. So through the first four stitches, and then through the next four stitches. And since I always fret that it's not going to be secure enough, I actually like to go through the eight stitches one more time, but this time I'm gonna drop them off my needle as I'm going. So again, I'm gonna go through those first four stitches, dropping them off my needle this time, and then I'll go through those second four stitches one more time. Pull the yarn through and now there's that little hole at the tip of the toe. I'm going to draw my yarn down through the center of that hole to the wrong side so the needle goes down through the tip of the toe And then I can pull my working yarn to tighten everything up and it closes that hole at the tip of the toe. And then I can weave in the yarn tail on the wrong side of my sock and I'm all done. I hope you enjoyed learning how to knit a flower toe for socks worked from the top down. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends, and if you'd like to try this pretty toe alternative in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my sundog socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!